This video lecture is on significant figures and more specifically the arithmetic related to them. Uh, so many times what happens is when you're in the lab you may be working with different uh, equipment or tools that may have different levels of precision. And so what occurs is you end up collecting data uh, with different levels of precision and then have to use them in order to calculate some value. If you're required to calculate some value or measurement using that information, the question is, how do you know how many significant figures your final answer should contain? And so that's what we're actually looking at in this video lecture. We're actually looking at determining how many uh, significant figures your final answer should contain if you were to have gotten your data or, uh, from different test equipment or tools uh, with different precision to them. So let's say, for instance, you are starting out where you're adding and subtracting, or adding or subtracting, um, these different uh, data values that you obtain from measurement equipment, and you need to determine what the uh, significant figures are for your final answer. So what do we end up doing in this case? Well. First of all, what you want to do is when adding or subtracting numbers, you want to determine the number of significant figures that are after, and by after what I mean is to the right of the decimal point. So after the, or to the right of the decimal point of each of the numbers that you are adding or subtracting. Okay. So after you've determined those, uh, the number of significant figures after the decimal point, what you want to do is from moving from right, uh, pardon me, from left to right or from top to bottom, you want to add or subtract those numbers. Third, what you want to do is you want to look at the results. The results cannot be more precise than the least precise number used to calculate it. The least precise number, how do you determine that? Well, the least precise number is the number with the least amount of significant figures to the right of the decimal point. Okay, so these three steps or these three rules you have to pay attention to when you're adding and subtracting your figures in a science, math, engineering uh, type environment, lab environment, or if you're uh, out in the professional world. So let's look at an example here. So in this example, we have what we want to do is we want to sum or find a sum of the following three numbers, and those three numbers are 6.86, 9.376, and 8.3782. And we want to know what the final answer should be such that we convey the correct amount of significant figures. So if you look at this, what we want to do is we want to add all three of these together. And remember what we said is we want to, the first thing we want to do is determine the amount of significant figures for uh, each of the values that were collected. All right, so for our first number, and it's the amount of significant figures after the decimal point. So for our first number, we have two digits after the decimal point. Those two digits are the 8 and 6 for the first number. For our second number, we have three digits after the decimal point, and those three digits are 3, 7, and 6. For the third number, we have three digits after the decimal point, and those three numbers are 3, 7, and 8. All right. So in this case, the number with the least amount of uh, significant figures after the decimal point is the first number, which is 6.86. All right, so let's say we went ahead and add those numbers together. If you go ahead and add those numbers together on your calculator, what you should notice is that your answer that the calculator gives you is 24.8. 614. Now that is the job of the calculator to give you exactly what you get when you calculate those three numbers together or add those three numbers together. But what the calculator does not do it is does not figure out significant figures for you. You have to figure that out. 
So since we have two significant figures after the uh, decimal point for the first number, we can only have two significant figures after the decimal point for our final answer. So the question is to you, what would the correct answer to this problem be? Of course, given the fact that we have to pay attention to significant figures. So I'll give you a few minutes to think about that. A few seconds, actually. All right. So the answer should be 24.61 as the final answer. All right. So that's for addition and subtraction. There are rules for multiplication and division. And those rules are, first, what you want to do is when multiplying and dividing numbers, you want to determine the number of significant figures for each number being multiplied or divided, being multiplied or divided. So unlike the addition and subtraction, you're just looking after the decimal point. For multiplication and division, you're looking at the total number of significant figures within that number. Second, you want to move from left to right or top to bottom and multiply or divide the numbers uh, based off of the sign that's given to you. Third, what you want to do is you want to, the, the, the third thing you want to pay attention to is the results will contain the same number of significant figures as the number with the least number of significant figures used to calculate it. All right. So again, the results will contain the same number of significant figures as the number with the least number of significant figures used to calculate it. So let's take a look at an example. And for this example, we're multiplying the numbers 18.76 times 9.57. And we want to know what the final answer should be if we're paying attention to significant figures. So let's go ahead and we say we're going to add those numbers. First step, remember what we want to do is we want to figure how many significant figures each of the numbers have. So for the first number, 18.76, there are two significant figures. Again, there are two significant figures. Oh, pardon me, four significant figures. What am I saying? There's two after the decimal point, but there's four total in that number. For the second number, there are three significant figures, three significant figures. So when we multiply those two numbers together, what does our calculator give us? So go ahead and calculate that number out. Okay, your calculator answer should end up being 179.5332 as a calculator answer. But again, this is the, that's the job of the calculator to give you everything. But this is not correct when it comes to uh, conveying the amount of significant figures. So what would the number of significant figures be? So which one has the least amount of significant figures? So the second one, uh, 9.57, has three significant figures. So your final answer has to have three significant figures. So if we look at that, what would, our, uh, what would this, the number of significant figures be? Take a few seconds to do that. All right, so your final answer should be 180. That should be a final answer. And the reason that your final answer is 180 is because we cannot have more than three significant figures. And so since we cannot have more than three significant figures and the 0.5 after the decimal point there, we have five, we have to round that 179 up to 180. And that makes the zero in the 180 now significant so that's 180 uh, would be the final answer for this uh, scenario all right all right so now we've looked at addition and subtraction multiplication and division but what if you have to multiply and divide and add and subtract within the same um, the same cal set of calculations so this becomes sort of a uh, problem to figure out which comes first, which one comes second. So we're looking at combined operations here. And when you're dealing with combined operations, you always have to remember PEM does. Remember PEM does means parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. That's the order of operations. And you're moving from left to right doing that. Secondly, you want to follow 
uh, the previous discussion rules or rules that we discussed earlier uh, when it comes to addition and subtraction as you go through uh, the um, order of operation. So let's take a look at how that's done. We have the combined operation uh, example, the first one. And what we have here is, uh, the, the question asks, what is the average of the following three measurements taken from the same measuring device in this case? So we have, uh, let's say we had three students that took three different measurements and one student thought it was 30.1, second student thought it was 30.5, and third thought it was 30.6 centimeters uh, for the um, measurement of some item, what would end up happening here is we need to add those, uh, we need to find the average of those, which combines addition and multiplication. So in this case, we're going to have to add those three numbers and then divide them by three in order to get the average. So uh, what would we end up getting, uh, how would we end up approaching this? Well, first of all, we'll take care of what's inside the parentheses, remember PEMDAS, and what's inside the parentheses is addition. So we go ahead and add all three of those numbers up together, and you'll see that we end up with 91.2 divided by 3. All right. Uh, once we've done that, we then divide by 3 and we end up with 30.4 centimeters. Now, one thing to uh, be uh, to be aware of here is that that three, that three as a divisor is not important when it comes to determining the significant figures because it is neither a measurement or a constant that was used. I mean, you will not end up saying that you had 3.000 um, items uh, that you were taking the average of. So that's why you would not consider that when it comes to the final answer. So when it comes to the final answer here, we're only considering the fact that the uh, in the division there of the 91.2 divided by three, we had three significant figures in 91.2. And so therefore that's what we're gonna use at the end in order to figure out how many significant figures to use. All right, let's say we have a second problem here. And this second problem combines, um, we have multiplication and division in this case. So we have 0 0.2 times 30.1 plus 0 0.30 times 30.5. So again, what we'll do, uh, we'll take the multiplication first, remember PEMDAS, and the multiplication says that we have 6.02 uh, plus 9.15, and this is coming from the calculator when we do each of those separately. From there then, okay, from there, remember that we have to pay attention to the amount of significant figures for the multiplication. And what that says is then, is that that 6.02 needs to be converted over to six, and the 9.15 needs to be converted over to 9.2. And the reason is because we have one significant figure uh, in the 0 0.2, and we have two significant figures in 0 0.30. And so therefore, that's why we got the 6 plus 9.2. We add those two numbers together. We get from the calculator that our added numbers turns out to be 15.2 but that is also not the correct amount of significant figures. Remember, we're adding in this case, so in terms of precision, we cannot have uh, the number 15.2 being more precise than six. There's no numbers behind the decimal point in the six, so that means that when we pay attention to significant figures in this case, our final answer should end up being equal to 15 the final answer should end up being equal to 15. And so this is our final answer. All right, so that concludes this uh, lecture on significant figures when it comes to arithmetic. Uh, please do check my YouTube channel for more um, lectures on significant figures and other science, math, and especially engineering type lectures.